Yeah, let's do it. Hi. Recording in progress. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's a glitch. Sorry. Hello, everyone. This is Alex Ramigo, and today I have the privilege to talk with my dear friend, Chris McCombs. He's <sighs> an actor, a singer, writer, producer, director of, well, so many things. Multi talented. Hi, Chris. He's your friend. He my loves friend. you so much. He misses <laughs> you every day. Spiritual guy as well because oh. you're such a positive person. But how are you doing? How's everything going? How's everything in Japan? Well, it's it's going all right. I I think like Tokyo especially has its own weird flow of time. You know what I mean? Because you lived here for for a long time too. The time in Tokyo goes by so fast. Or so slow. There's nothing in between. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like the last two years have just flown by. I cannot believe that it's 2022. Like it's crazy. How's that you started with 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 this dream? Like that you wanted to be an actor, you wanted to be a model, you wanted to be a singer. Mm -hmm. What what you wanted to be when you started? Oh, when I started, I wanted to be invisible. Like um, I'm serious. When I was a kid, I, like um, I have one brother, uh, his name's Matt, and um, they found out at a young age that he had uh, like genius level IQ. So there was a lot of attention put on him uh, and a lot of unfair pressure too. And um, I think people kept wanting to put that kind of pressure on me. And as a response, I wanted to disappear. I didn't want that kind of attention And at school, I used to like uh, cheat on the IQ tests. I would just fill in A for every answer. A, 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 A. <laughs> like, I didn't want what happened to my brother to happen to me. And um, one day the school changed their rules that even if you finished the IQ test early, you had to stay at the school, you had to stay in the room. So I thought, all right, I, I guess I'll actually do this test. And, um, Yeah, like maybe two weeks later, they they pulled me out of my my class and they told me like, you know, you your IQ. Uh, uh, I was in Ohio, Ohio at that time, and um, they have like a, a state rule about IQ and what classes you go into. And I, I tested too high, and they put me into gifted education, and um, it it was like hell for me, like. You know, I did not want to be special. I did not want to stand out. I especially did not want that. But the gifted education teacher said, like, you have to have a specialty, like an area of expertise. And, um, you know, you're in the choir and you obviously like to sing. And at the time, I'd done some church shows as well. Oh, yes, I used to go to church when I was a kid. Wow, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I was in all the church plays, and I was in the bell choir. And uh, she'd said, um, her name was Miss Jewel. I still remember her name. Like That's how much of an influence she had on me. She said, like, why don't you get into a show? If you get into a theater uh, or a program, you don't have to come to school. You'll go to rehearsals, and you'll be graded on your, your shows. And um, that sounded amazing. I, We're I into the to the creative side to the yeah. uh, art. Yeah, and just the fact that I wouldn't have to go to school and have what happened to my brother happen to me, all that pressure from gets to education and you know the burdens of being an intellectual. No, <laughs> I didn't want any of that. So um, I went to my first audition and I got it. Uh, and um, yeah, that was a theater troupe that I wound up performing with for four years wow and how many yeah. places have you lived because I, i when i met you you before you were living in las vegas but then yes, so yes. you grew up in ohio or um so my my parents got divorced when i was three i think or two uh, and at that time we'd lived in pennsylvania like a very small town in pennsylvania like the middle of nowhere amish country basically uh, but uh, it was actually called pima tuning valley and um, from there i moved to ohio and from ohio we lived in wisconsin for a while then back to ohio i went to college in florida i worked on cruise ships Then I worked uh, as a model in Las Las uh, Las Vegas, like, and then Tokyo. So it's kind of crazy. I started um, working with this theater troupe, and we we toured all over the place. Um, 
and it was really aggressive rehearsal process. Like I think during the summers we would go to camps and actually, uh, you know, stay mm -hmm. for a couple of days. And uh, God, you know, it was so long ago. I'm having a hard time remembering. But I think during the summers we rehearsed almost every day. Um, cause it, there was like multiple shows going on at once, and um, there was improv as well. So depending on where we were performing, it would depend on what role we were. Uh, so it was really like complicated. And I think when I was 16, uh, someone scouted me for modeling. Um, it was somewhere after one of those shows that we'd done, someone was just like, you're, you're definitely a model. Like you, you need to sign up. And um, I, I really had a, um, zero confidence in how I looked at that time. I mean, like I said, I really just wanted to be invisible. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know why. I think it was just something about that gifted education teacher, Miss Jewel, that taught me to be loose and just sort of, you know, take the chances as they come and at least see them out. Uh, you know, don't shut doors before they're open. How did you end up in Las Vegas? Well, I, I worked on cruise ships for a while. Um, and I realized that that was not the right step for me. Like cruise ships is an awful lot of repetition. And, um, you know, I, I really couldn't stand that lifestyle. And um, we, we went to Las Vegas for like a two day trip right after I'd left cruise ships. And I just remember being struck by two things. Like one, it is a 24 hour entertainment industry there. There's every kind of work. There's live shows, modeling, theater. I mean, there's vaudeville, like there's everything. And two, just the colors. Like I had left the greens and blues of the ocean to return to the grays and the whites of Ohio winter. And when I got to Vegas, it was reds and, you know, these fiery. Yeah. So I just remember being called into that, like the 24 hour lifestyle and the bright, reds and browns of the desert you know mm -hmm. yeah have you been to vegas no i haven't but i you know i was thinking now that you're talking about that it goes a lot with maybe what you're doing right now and this is maybe i'm going too further but it's just like you have experienced so many things like going to so many fields mm. also even in weather right now like <laughs> snow sea then you have the, <laughs> the desert and wow were you nervous when you started? Like, how is the, the environment there? Like, it's not like people are like jealous or co a lot of competition, mm. maybe? In Las Vegas, like, um, it is a city of gambling and chance. And uh, I worked with um, a agency called NV Models and Talent. And the, the owner of that agency, his name is uh, Daniel. He was great like he really was the person i think i needed to meet at that time in my life mm -hmm. he's very very talented at uh unearthing new talent like finding people that are diamonds in the rough or people that just need a little bit of exposure and and i think one of the things that he he talked to me was like entertainment is gambling and you have to bet big you could bet small in a casino forever and never win anything. You'll never get ahead. You've got to be willing to go all in or get the hell out of the game. And uh, that, like, as I worked in Vegas, mostly I was working club events or club fashion shows. Um, it's not a big print market, like mostly because it's 24 hours, it's it's live things. And that, that lesson always stuck with me. I could go to the audition for the small guarantee and bet small or go all motherfucking in, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah that's what Daniel taught me. May I ask you how, because Las Vegas is also besides of the gambling and everything, like there's a lot of uh, vicious stuff there. Like how, how's that you didn't, because you're a very healthy person, how's that you mm. didn't get like uh, drug to all these like maybe drugs or mm -hmm. you know, like alcohol or gambling that's a good question well especially for the for, for drugs and drinking like the theater troupe that i started off in it just that collectively it wasn't a thing right like we were working together towards a goal and alcohol would have been in the way of that goal and the theater troupe the rules were very strict because we were all in our, our teens. So 
you know, if there was an issue with that, I think the person would have been removed from the troop probably. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so like from the start of my career, it was just always kind of a rule. And in Vegas, like the, the city is really sort of divided into those who are participating in, in Las Vegas and those who are running Las Vegas. And when you live in Vegas, um, it you can get lost in, in participating in Vegas quite easily, but I, I like, working and money <laughs> and keeping my money <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah i just really focused on the work there wasn't a lot of jealousy or or bitterness around me um there's a lot of work in vegas and um yeah i think i was just very fortunate for at least the time that i was in vegas i didn't have a lot of that around me mm -hmm. But also maybe the, for the kind of person that you are, you're also very positive, you're very cheerful. You're, it's true. So I guess yeah. like that also helped a lot to not have these kind of people around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, again, like that theater troupe in the beginnings, they really taught me like you are who you associate with in entertainment and you've got to build like kind of a a, a bubble of, of positivity and safety or you'll just be floating on your own. You know, that's part of why you and I got along so well. You're so positive as well. And like, I think one of the things that really attracted me to you as a friend and a professional is that you are realist, but you're also optimistically realistic. Like, okay, this is an A rank festival. They might not be interested, but it's worth trying. Like, I, I love that about you so much. Yeah, I guess you, you, you shouldn't stop for anything like you we should try like i mean yeah. life is too short to not do what well, you what you want because sometimes we can get dragged by fear but it's not good yeah i mean sometimes maybe you can take some step back and say like okay i'm gonna rest this time maybe one year oh. two years whatever but then never you have to go back, <laughs> you have to go back yeah. and continue because yeah like, that's life right <laughs> yeah but, then, but it is how is that you you got to japan like how many years did you spend in las vegas like I think six years maybe um, I had done a, a magazine shoot um, and at the launch party for the for the magazine I was talking with the editor um, and at that that time I had I'd made some pretty good money and I was buying sort of stupid things like you know jeans that cost four hundred dollars and I got a car that was way too expensive for the money I was making and um, I caught it in time that I was using my money poorly and so I decided to start studying a language to differentiate myself from other models or, or entertainers and uh, as you know like most European models uh, speak Spanish English and French or English Italian and and uh, Spanish like that combination is the most common so I thought mm -hmm. if I studied Uh, an Asian language, it would give me a strategic advantage. Yeah. And uh, the editor had heard this story that I'd been studying Japanese and he'd said, um, we're looking for an, uh, a journalist that can go to Tokyo to, to write an article for us about fashion and art. Um, would you be willing to do it? And I was, of course, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they paid for my entire first trip to Japan <laughs> and I was blown away. I mean, absolutely blown away by by the fashion, by the culture, by the nightlife here, and not to not to be trite, but by the colors too, like the neon and and the shine in Shinjuku at night. Like I still think Shinjuku is one of the most beautiful, colorful places I've seen in its own way. Right? Yeah, it's so enigmatic as well. It, yeah, uh, I don't know. Tokyo has so much life in so many so many ways. Like yeah, <laughs> whatever you want. I agree. Yeah. yeah, I think like anyone who comes to Tokyo can feel that that there's this current of life in the city that's very distinct to the city, and um, it's either a place that you could see yourself living or or a place uh, that that you you cannot stand. Like I think that the the energy here either pulls you or pushes you away, and oh. for me it was a real strong pull. So then yeah, so, you that you fell in love with Tokyo when you visited? You know, I I'm a very like clinical person about 
work decisions, like very logical. And it, it wasn't that I fell in love here, but I saw the potential to make money here. And it was very clear to me, like um, the advertisements in Japan, there's always foreign models being featured, commercials, mm -hmm. television shows. Like I, in the week that I spent here, I saw it. And um, I did some checking around with other models that I'd known who had done contracts here. And I heard how much money they made. And I thought like, okay, maybe this is my next step. I'm studying the language. Uh, you know, I, I, I can feel the potential to make money here. So yeah, I, I think that's a big difference between me and a lot of people here. I just like the way business is done here. The entertainment when i first got here very much the work that you did in in japan stayed in japan like there was not a lot of uh instances where work would cross over to other countries but now i mean things have changed so much in the past 12 years my mom um has the potential to see some of the stuff that i'm doing in in her living room like there's a nhk world premium that basically broadcasts shows the next day all over the world so it's a totally different game now that's it's amazing on Netflix as well so then it's all... oh yeah 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 like there's so many amazing opportunities now being based out of Tokyo that that weren't here 12 years ago a lot's changed I mean probably they don't feel or they didn't feel this necessity of being abroad going abroad to to share all the, the things that they're doing besides of the anime or manga or like mm -hmm. video games things like that but well this is a, a really deep and complicated discussion um, I think uh, Japan and you know, we're we're always going to be foreigners in regards to Japan. Like no matter how long I live here or how deep I involve myself in the culture or community, I I will always be a foreigner or an outsider. But there's a a beauty in the perspective that comes from being outside of something but you see things from a, a different vantage right so i i can't speak you know as a japanese person or, or, or on behalf of japan but i can only speak as, as a as a outsider yeah. it seems like there's two very conflicting ideologies here the majority ideology especially in entertainment is that entertainment made by japan is entertainment for japanese people and therefore the mentality must be how can we make this so that Japanese people can enjoy it and the conflicting opinion is but things have changed uh, there is a whole world of people who are in love with Japan and Japanese culture and who are ready to enjoy and appreciate the work that's made here so we must consider these people too and it's this battle right now in 2022 that is so exciting to witness every day you can imagine <laughs> i love change man opportunity is born from change and change is the most delicious thing that can happen in entertainment right challenges and yeah new new world, oh, yeah. Way of doing things new paths yeah yes well that's the most i think wonderful thing about entertainment beta becomes vhs and vhs <laughs> becomes laser disc to dvd to blu-ray to streaming and yeah. opportunity is born every step of the way right true yeah yeah so then you you went as a journalist then and then how, how like did you decide to go and study japanese and or hmm. well so at, at that were, point uh, after you speak perfect japanese Yes, I, well, I remember. not quite perfect, but I try. Uh, I still have a tutor, actually. I mean, I have Japanese lessons every other week. Uh, to, I'm to keep... so fluent. I remember that people <laughs> some were surprised of you, like speaking uh, Japanese, that maybe they would try to reply, or like maybe their brain wouldn't understand that you're speaking Japanese. Yeah. And it was like, eh. yeah, it happens even now. Like, like uh, I, I'm on TV right now two times a day, some days three times on, on national television. And still, like, as much as people see my damn face, like, <laughs> people still ask me, like, oh, do you really speak Japanese or are you just memorizing words? Like, what? <laughs> no, of course, I, yeah. Um, after I, uh, I came back from working as a journalist here, 
I went back to college and to study Japanese full time. Like I used the money I was making modeling and doing events and promotions to pay for school again. And、um, after about two years of studying, I started reaching out to agencies here in Tokyo. And、um, the original plan was to stay here for just six months、um, to, to see how much money I could make. But I realized pretty quickly there would be more opportunities beyond modeling. Um, you know, including television, which is what I do full time now. Yeah.、Uh, yeah. And I, I got、um, an offer to, to work on a television show for a year. And that was kind of what was my main decision to stay. Like, okay, if I've got a, a regular role in a television show, I, I need to see what else can be done here. Twelve years later, Alex, here we still are. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. It's a, such a journey as well. Yeah. How much would you say that you have changed through these years, like living there as a professional, like、uh, as an actor, as a model?、Mm. Well,、uh, I think personally, I'm not who I was when I first got here at all. Like, it's been 12 years, and you know, no matter where you are in the world, we change. But when I first got here, I remember feeling very lonely. Like,、uh, people don't talk here, right? Like,、um, for example, when you're waiting in line at Starbucks or when you're in the store looking at something, people don't talk to you, they, they try to give you your space. In America, like we we chat, you know, like while you're waiting in line, oh, that looks so nice. What are you, what is that? Or, oh, I love those shoes.、Uh, where did you get those? You know, you you talk to people.、And、so I remember feeling so lonely、uh, without that here at first. But now when I go back to America, I'm so overwhelmed、mm-hmm. by by how much people. Want to communicate with you, it's it's overstimulating, like it's shocking. Was it hard for you when you first left Tokyo to, to go to Sweden? Was it all right?、Mm, it was、uh, shocking actually, because of course,、uh, yeah, but also maybe just to see. I was not getting used to see all these like tall, blonde people that look <laughs> models like, all over the place, and I was just like, kind of, oh my god. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that probably was the, the most shocking thing. Oh, wow. So much into their head as well, so, or into their personal space. Then、mm-hmm. you can see it as well. Like when you sit in the metro, like people tend to take like spaces. Now I do that as well. So it is so interesting because, yeah, you're right. We change with these kind of things. It's, it's so funny how we modified our, our own、uh, behavior as well with this. Oh,、thing. yeah. Absolutely. And like Japan. There's this like constant social pressure to adhere to the, the norms, you know, to, to be a part of society. Like it's impossible to ignore that force to, to follow the, the rules of the, for example, the rules of the train, you know.、Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't think we have such social pressure in America like that to, to conform, like this constant, relentless pressure to, to, to fall in line. Yeah. yeah. So it's hard, I would say almost impossible to not be influenced by, by Japan, especially Tokyo. Yeah. It, it demands change of you. True. And that also, maybe as, a, as an actor, as an artist, as a model, like how did you perceive people looking at you in the beginning when you were like, you know, trying or like suddenly, because maybe suddenly you were new, right? In this, yeah. Like, yeah. Even if you knew the. the、um, Environment that is like the acting and, and modeling, but coming to a new place where、yeah. people see you completely different,、mm. how, how were you treated? How did you feel? What were your first impressions? Well, this, this is such a, a good topic. Like, first and foremost, it wasn't so much how people viewed me, but how I viewed them. Like, Everything is so different here. There's no unions, first of all, which means the sets are, are completely and totally structurally different than anything I'd ever seen in America. There's no guaranteed eating time, drinking water is not a given. There may not be water on a set.、Um, The, the way that agencies work as well here, like it's insane. I've been represented by one agency、uh, called Freewave here、uh, 
uh, they, they represent me exclusively now, but that's not the norm, that's the exception. And Freewave has like over a thousand people registered, right? Like yeah. jugglers and musicians and, and jazz bands and actors and extras. And no American agency would ever, ever take such a wide spread of entertainers. Like how? <laughs> how i was so shocked the first time because i i'd initially uh enlisted as a model but the first time i had gotten an acting offer i thought they'd sent it to the wrong person and so i replied to them like oh sorry i think you accidentally sent me this this um acting actor for a television show you know i i'm just in the model division and they were like no <laughs> we don't have that <laughs> it's like you're you're everything how was it for you to work in a different language, like suddenly being on, like with, surrounded by cameras and then like acting in a different language that maybe is not yours, like, or yeah. like, just listening to everyone instructions and things like that, like in the beginning should be probably a bit, a bit uh, hectic to listen to all these instructions and be like, oh, kind of lost. Yeah. Maybe. When I first got here, I remember immediately identifying that I needed to work as an extra for a while. Like it wasn't even a matter of this is my only opportunity. It was, I, I the first on-camera job I had here was a music video and it, I was the main character in the video. And everything is different about how they shoot here versus America, the tempo, the, the words they use. And I remember thinking like, I've got to take a step back. Like I do not understand, not the language, but how, they're using these words on sets. And so I I remember like, even though I'd started, I'd, at that point I'd been working for, oh God, like 13, 14 years in the industry, just clearly understanding I needed to, to step back. And, um, oh, I've never had any problems performing in Japanese because like you speak multiple languages. So I'm sure you'll, you'll understand this, but like when I speak a foreign language, it's all a performance. I'm imitating someone's Japanese. I I'm mimicking a turn of phrase that I've heard uh, a friend use or my boyfriend use or my agent use. So acting in Japanese has always been very natural to me. I don't know if it's very good or not, but it's been very <laughs> natural. But it was much more difficult learning the Japanese culture that's involved with sets, how to communicate with a director, um, how directors communicate with their staff. Like that aspect of the language was far more challenging. Mm. I can imagine, yeah, because, and also all these, um, you know, like roles, hierarchies, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, that exists here in a way that's so, so much less defined than America because of the, the unions and the guilds that we have. And like the rules are quite clearly laid out as to what your job expectations are and what is correct and what's not. Here they have senpai kohai, which means like the senior member and the, the newer member. The senpai status wise is clearly higher, but everything else is gray and unwritten, right? Like it's, it's not defined at all. So it's so, even after all this time, it's so confusing. Like, for example, if the staff has time to get to know me, um, they're, they're quite respectful and they'll treat me like any other Japanese performer. But on a set where they're not used to me, they're, I think, often quite afraid. <laughs> like, they don't know if I can communicate, you know, and there's a lot of people here that don't speak Japanese fluently. Uh, so it's like, okay, what kind of foreigners have they encountered on a set? Who are they used to? What prejudice might they have mm. a, about foreign entertainers? Mm. Um, you know, even on my, on one of the regular shows that I do now, some of the staff is just so scared of me and it's been half a year still. And they see me speaking fluently on set all the time. But when they talk to me, it's like, do you understand me? Yes, of course. What? It's been six months, man. Like, what's going on? <laughs> Do you have any, like, count of all the shows that you have been involved with? No. Maybe, like, maybe you don't have any count because I know maybe, like, magazines and yeah. commercials and so on. So, I have a general idea of, like, for modeling the large campaigns that I've done um, for Japanese television. I, I'm pretty sure... 
on my Japanese Wikipedia. I've got that relatively up to date. Um, like as a as a regular, like ones that really count. I've had six year long regular contracts with Japanese shows. Uh, one show I did for four years. I just finished it this month. Um, my other show is also four years. Uh, we're continuing into our fifth year this year, and、um, the third show is moving into its second year. So I've been really, like, quite fortunate to have these long regular roles here. Like, it's it's quite unheard of for foreigners to to have roles this long. Yeah, I remember that actually in Freeway they felt really proud that they had you because I remember when I went there.、Yeah. Sometimes they say like, "Ah,、oh, we have Chris." <laughs> like we, Freewave is one of the largest、um, foreign entertainment agencies here, and、uh, like I said, you know, they they do something that's so different agency wise, having everyone be in one large pool. Like I, I have a lot of respect for them about how they work, and、uh, I'm I'm very lucky that they respect me too, and they make a lot of ex- exceptions for me. I think they realize that I I kind of have my own way of operating and it's very different from other people. And... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but、yeah. you have also brought a lot of good things for for the agency, so I guess that's also、yeah. it's it's just、uh, give and take. So, well, I I think one thing that's common between both you and me, like I think talk is very cheap. It's not enough. We have to be willing to show that we're going to take part in in making change too. Um, and I think in, in especially Tokyo, people give up; they they just quit. Like they they try; it's harder than they think,、uh, and and they they quit. And、uh, Freeway have seen a lot of that in their time. You know, promise of of doing something great, and then they just quit. And then there's me. How <laughs> <laughs> how's it been for you? Like this path, for example, because I know that it's not easy. You know, sometimes you are up, sometimes you are down, sometimes. But how do you how do you do to not lose all this、uh, good energy or this light? Like because I always speak to you. I, I guess I, I know that you're a very emotional person. You're very kind. <laughs> But you are also very positive, and regularly you tend to keep your energy here, and that's、oh, yeah. quite.、Um, for some people, could be exhausting to to do. Sure. Oh, it is exhausting. I am exhausting. Like as a human being, I am exhausting. <laughs> I, I, I'm not necessarily exhausted, but like, you know, I, I always feel bad for my friends. Like, I am a consuming person.、Um, I, I, I think. It's just so important to be mindful of who you surround yourself with, and and、uh, aligning yourself with people who are motivated and positive, as as well、um, as being motivating and positive yourself, right? Like give and take. Yeah. You 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 have to be positive in order to get positivity. I think.、Mm-hmm. Um, being positive inspires positivity in people, which in turn can. You know, restore you when you're feeling low,、mm-hmm. uh, and I think that's kind of helped me survive here and and remain here when other people have have given up or found it to be too difficult. Like,、mm-hmm. thanks to Tokyo Cowboys, you know, I really have this team around me that's very strong, and、uh, you know, Free Wave as well. The president Mutsumi and my direct manager Keiko, we we argue, like we fight, but. <laughs> We're fighting for the same goal and the same cause: positivity and change. And we we tap gloves like boxers, and then we we hug and <laughs> you know. I think you should feel really proud of yourself because now that you mentioned Tokyo Cowboys, Tokyo Cowboys is um is um like a collective <laughs> that. Oh yeah. I want to say like you started with Camila, right? Yes. Camila yes. is a model and actress as well. But yeah, but but then you you also with this project inspired a lot of people. You gather、uh, so many talented talented people、um, from all over the world, with so many languages, so different、yep. cultures.、Uh, that's also quite. I thought I think、uh, it was something challenging in Tokyo because even if Tokyo is a very multicultural、uh, city. Still, there's not so many projects that are like that, where you have people from all over the world working together、mm. in, in, creatively, and then、mm. you you kind of started that.、Uh, 
quite a long time ago when now now yeah. it's happening right everywhere but i think you were a very uh you have a different you have a different vision definitely yes time. that's very true yeah yeah i agree with that you they, go ahead with it i think a lot of um a lot of the foreigners that are here um they started working in entertainment after they got here or they didn't have any formal training or, or any sort of perspective on what could be done and um i think there's a lot of brilliantly talented people here that through no fault of theirs are a bit short-sighted about what can be done and um if you don't know to ask for more if you don't know that there's more out there then you're you're never going to want it and i came here like you having experiences in my own country so i i could see like oh right there are so many brilliant people here they they just need to understand that there is more there there's ways to get more mm -hmm. um Yeah, a lot of the foreign groups they either tend to all be foreigners without any Japanese inclusion, which is a mistake because this is Japan, uh or they're they're just a bit again through no fault of their own either goalless because they're purely hobby based or short-sighted. They they don't have any knowledge about how to go bigger. Um you know, Tokyo Cowboys we are all professionals who want something more so we each bring our individual professional experiences to to this i i guess you could say community <laughs> i'm not sure what the right word is production company yeah. i don't want to sound like a cult you know what i mean <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah 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 but everyone brings their their own knowledge and we kind of encourage each other to want more you could be a reporter on japanese television or we could make a documentary series that features your reporting abilities and distribute it to uh an aggregator that can get it on a a, a streaming network in 190 countries why think small when you can have more yeah true but are you right? aware that you you are the one also like seeing these these things because i mean i know that people should believe in them, themselves but the one thing that i guess that's why people feel so comfortable surrounded uh, by you is that you believe in them you see also their their thing and you make them shine which is really really nice and really um i really kind from you i guess as well like to just open the the, the space for them to to shine as well like to shine together uh, And also, I guess you've been learning a lot from it, right? You're now a writer because you've been writing your own shows, your own things, and mm -hmm. uh, yep. even directing, like maybe also from editing. I don't know if you already know like how to edit, for example. Oh, yeah. Learned but, how. Yeah. I mean, I, I sit with our directors and editing team while they edit as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and the game, uh, despite the fact I know nothing about making a, a video game, uh, you know, our team is currently making a, a game called the Benz RPG. I've sat with every moment, uh, every single moment of the programming process, everything. Um, well, first and foremost, you know, I I had this gifted education teacher that helped me figure out how to shine and uh, the, the theater troupe director. And then again, I had a, a great manager in, in Las Vegas that helped me figure it out. I think part of my mentality was set because of those people showing me how to do it to myself like learning how to identify someone's strengths and helping them take advantage of it has been such a fundamental part of my career up until now mm -hmm. that i don't think i can operate any other way like i think that's just part of how i i work so like um the 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 benz rpg the game that i was just talking about like you can download it now on um on steam or for ios or android but You know, we essentially it's like a, a beta test. Like the game is released and it's still being play tested on on our end. So, uh, yeah, I've got a play testing session tonight. <laughs> How does it feel to be a uh, um, a character in a video game? Oh, like a dream come true. I mean, when I was a kid, we my dad uh, had bought us a Super Famicom, not a Super Nintendo, uh, maybe a good year and a half before Super Fam uh, Super Nintendo came out. And so we had all these Japanese video games. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's part of how I fell in love with the language was these mysterious characters in this video game. And yeah, now 
I my voice is in this video game and the character of me is in this video game and it's so strange like it's it's a crazy world isn't it yeah it is you, what, what's your favorite show the, the, from all the, the shows that you have done which one is your favorite one well uh, yeah. it's actually quite easy to say like do you mean like the ones I've made or the ones that I that I'm on that you've been on yeah So, all right, the, uh, I can oh, easily oh, say two. I can easily say two. <laughs> From the ones we've made, like the Benza, of course, like the Benza represents hope and change and, and what you can accomplish with hard work. Like the Benza changed my life. It really did. I cannot believe something called the toilet seat changed my life, but it did. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I thought I understood hard work, uh, but I did not until the Benza. And I also thought I understood loving my job uh but i did not until the benza like it really showed me what loving your work means and um right now um i'm on a television show every day on nhke education and it's also in i think it's like 120 countries on nhk world premiere um the show is run by a uh, in Japan, a very famous professor, teacher named uh, Hiroto, Onishi Hiroto. And the English name is Onishi Hiroto's Basic English Recipe. In Japanese, Onishi Hiroto no Eikaiwa Teiban Recipe. But on this show, they have me speaking fluent Japanese in the studio with the teacher. It's so revolutionary and, and insane that there I am on Japanese TV being allowed to speak fluent Japanese and it's not a joke you know this this man this uh, gentleman named Hiroto really took a chance on, on casting me in this position it, he's got a lot of control of this show and it's his brand that I'm I'm working for and with and um, you know I'm just so humbled and grateful to, to have a chance to work with someone like him and to be in this position on NHK. Like, as you know, foreigners are usually the joke here, like where there's something to laugh at, yeah. but not on this show. So it's like this little, <laughs> little space that I'm proud of on, on Japanese TV, you know? It's a big step, definitely. Huge. The, the girl that's with us, excuse me, the woman that is with us in the studio, um, she's a mixed race, uh, American female. Um, she's just, the most wonderful just representing everything that could be possible with the japanese entertainment industry also speaking fluent japanese next to me you know she studied entertainment and performance arts at college like she's everything that should be having this chance on television like uh, it's just such an exciting show i think you should feel really proud of this big achievement because it's also this time of changing where everything is opening and you have the chance to be part of it. So it's, it's amazing. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, my dear friend, like the success that I've had here in this market, it has not been a result of chance or, you know, passively waiting for things to happen. No, 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 not at all. It has been aggressive, hard work and it's paid off. And there's a lot of people that talk negatively about uh, the, the Tokyo market, but I disagree. You've just got to show them that, that you're capable of more and they'll take a chance on you. I believe that fundamentally. It's why I'm still here. <laughs> How about cinema? Have you have you done anything with cinema? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I worked with Yamada Yoji. He's a very, very famous Japanese director. Uh, I believe he's won a couple of Academy Awards here. Uh, my favorite indie director, Ishinido. Inudo Ishin. I believe that's the Japanese thing. I can't remember. Uh, I got a chance to work with him as well. I'd been watching his movies before I, I, I'd even come to this country. Yeah. Uh, again, totally different than America. Nothing, nothing similar to how we do stuff in the States. <laughs> how would you say that is your life now? I sometimes ask myself, like, what my life would be like if I had the same level of success in America. I mean, the pay here is so much less. Mm. Um, the amount of time that I'm on TV here in America, I 
I can't imagine how much money or power, like what that would equate to. Um, but I think like this is my my fight, my battleground. Like something about Tokyo has resonated within me, and I've dug myself so far into the sand here. You know, I, I've really decided that this is where I'm supposed to be, um, for better or for worse. Uh, I know that I am certainly successful in comparison to a lot of other foreign entertainers here. Um, I just hope that I can spend the rest of my time here creating more opportunities for other foreigners and sort of creating at least four for an entertainer something a little bit more akin to what we have in North America. Um, you know, I, I don't think I'm ever going to go so far as to make a union here or anything, but, you know, just showing people that, yo, know, God, never. <laughs> uh, you know, just showing people that we can do more, there is more to be had here for us. We've just got to keep leading by example and, and staying optimistic and, mm -hmm. you know, not saying that this is their fight and their issues, but this is our fight and our issues. And with everything that you have achieved, because it's been quite a lot, what's the next uh, step for Chris McCombs? Uh, well, hopefully seeing you. My God. <laughs> <laughs> I need to, I want to go to Japan. Like, I, I'm thinking yeah. well, like that all this situation gets a little bit more settled and then maybe yeah. I can go back. Like, of course, I miss you. I'm like, I was actually thinking, like, maybe I would ask Chris if I could stay. <laughs> like, oh, any time. Go and then, yeah, of course. Yeah. But also, if you want oh. to go to Sweden, you know, you have your house here. and. Uh, oh, I would love to. Yeah. Those Swedish boys. Those yeah, Swedish I boys. To, I might goodness. have you here and then, yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, for the moment, like, uh, I'm very, very excited to finish work on the Benza RPG. Um, I think that the Benza series three will be the last formal series of the Benza. Like I've said what I wanted to say within that world and I've done what I wanted to do with that world. And, uh, you know, I look forward to Tokyo Cowboys next project. I know what I want to do. Um, we'll see what the industry and the world is like at that time and what chances there are. But yeah, I, I'm just very excited to keep pushing forward with Tokyo Cowboys. And uh, I, I think I'll be here in Tokyo for a while. Uh, to come like uh, there's a lot of advantages to being based in tokyo wouldn't you agree yeah yeah of course any advice for for all that people that dream with uh achieving certain things what would you advise them to to do to continue uh, or to not go out of the path and then continue working on it because you're mm. a really good example for that i mean yeah well uh, first but foremost, lead by example. Never ask someone to do something you're not willing to do for yourself. Uh, give and take, like we've said many times. Entertainment, that, that's a core principle, I think. Uh, you're, you're going to have to give to get, so get ready. And um, finally, I think, like, be accepting of the good in yourself. You know, don't focus just on what's wrong or, or what what what's not going right but what is right and and how to move forward with what you have and see that in other people too and help them utilize it i, I think those three things are what enabled me to survive here mm -hmm. and in entertainment it's my 26th year working in entertainment this year um 26. And, uh, yeah because i started when i was 15 and i'm 41. <laughs> 41 well what yeah oh, yeah yeah, yeah. Like Thank yeah, you. I cannot tell you. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, you, yeah. you look like thirty. No, no, you don't. You don't look like forty. Like for no, no. Go on. Go on. Tell me more. <laughs> yes. no, of course, I can't. No. What are you gonna do for for? Are you gonna do something to celebrate? You definitely should do it. It's been oh. quite a long path, and I guess you deserve it. Well, this is gonna be like the bougiest thing I've said to you, but like before COVID, for like two years running, my birthday was at the same time as a huge television award show in Korea, uh, like a web series show. So I spent my birthday like two years in a row at this gorgeous award ceremony and just nothing feels the same, like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know how to celebrate anything anymore. Like I want red carpets and live Korean television coverage. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, yeah, no, that, that's a, that's a really good way to celebrate, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, with a new project, that would be amazing, also. Yeah, yeah. Where well, people, for now, I go ahead. I was gonna ask you where where people can find you, like if they want to watch something that is currently uh, uh, available or streaming. Oh, or well, the the Benza is currently available in 190 territories on Plex, and it's also on Amazon Prime. Um, you know, Plex, the good thing about it is you don't need to subscribe. You can log in with Facebook and you can view it with commercials. If you got it on Amazon Prime where you live, uh, you can watch it for free if you're a Prime subscriber. Um, yeah, the Benza RPG is currently available on Steam, Android and iOS and it should be available on Nintendo Switch later this year. Very exciting. Is it free to download as well? Or? Yes, right now it is free to download. Uh, like I said, because we're still kind of smoothing some things out, so it's free. It should only be $5 when it comes out on the Switch. Like, we don't want to charge people a lot for it because we want them to, to play, like to come hang out with us. Yeah. On Netflix, you are also on the show. Right? Oh, yeah. I always forget about that Netflix show. Yeah. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> what is uh, it? It's just like, uh -huh. you should. Yeah, fun. You know, we'll have to save that for coffee. Like I can't, uh, Followers is also available on Netflix and I think it's 120 countries too. Yeah, yeah. So you can check that out, but I'd much rather you checked out the Benza. Okay, perfect. Then everybody should watch the Benza. <laughs> I can't, you know, that's all I can say about followers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Oh, to I'm so in love with you, anything, anytime. Yeah, no, I hope I hope we can meet soon and let's let's keep in Me talk. too. Uh, Me too. We're either gonna check out the gorgeous Japanese guys or the gorgeous Swedish guys, one way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should go to another place because no. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, but yeah, but thank you so much and really appreciate that you accepted my invitation to to this interview. Of course. You you were actually one of the persons that I had like I wanted to make some videos before because also I need to practice and so on but um, but really thank you uh, you're you're one of my uh, biggest inspirations in life as well oh. the way that you see life and how how you work for your dreams and projects and how you inspire people and and also like push them to achieve things. Um, I guess it's good that someone reminds you that because uh, sometimes it's not enough with oneself telling you like, okay, I'm doing good or something. It's good that someone reminds you and and um, I guess you can see it because everybody goes to you. You're like like uh, like a magnet, so then of good energy, and then you attract the same, and then you can see it with all the people that that is surrounded by you and and. And I feel really proud of being your friend. And thank you so much. I know that we're not really, I'm not really good with keeping in touch with this crazy life because of the schedules and so on. But I also know that you're very busy with uh, yeah. your projects. But is that I, I am uh, glad that we, every time we talk is the same. It's like, uh, as yeah, of course. Well, that's the beauty of being good, true friends with somebody. You don't need to message every day. All you need to know is when you need me, I will be there. And you are always there when I need you. Give and take. Give and take. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Also, by the way, I need the. Uh, we need to to find that magazine where we are together. Oh, okay. I will find it. I'm. If okay. I don't have it, my mom has it. But you know, it, it's going to be so embarrassing for me to ask my mom to go through that. I mean, there's like. Like it's it's a gay magazine, so there's like graphic, <laughs> very graphic advertisements in there. Yeah, but I'll do it for you. Read in the book, <laughs> looking sexy, but <laughs> intelligent and uh, interesting at the same time. Read in the book. Oh yeah, all those things. <laughs> Super seriously sexy, but intellectual. Perfect sexy. combination. <laughs> and we need dating. I don't know what. <laughs> like, or maybe just talking about nipples, as you said before. <laughs> probably, probably, probably. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. I love you. Send you a lot of kisses and good energy and a oh, big thank you. Here. And yes, uh, we're in touch. <laughs> yes, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. -bye.